uh, welcome to BGSM session. And uh, if possible, please do keep your videos on so that it's more interactive. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, let us remind ourselves as to why we have this meeting. What is the purpose of BGSM meeting? It is to challenge each one of us uh, to grow our businesses 10x. Okay, can we come up with uh, uh, you know new concepts or ideas or something that we have experienced and share it share it with one another and in a discussion format, not as a you know lecture format, but in a discussion format in a meeting format, and you know uh, challenge each other for growing our businesses. That's the purpose why we have this. And BGSM is for the pathfinder stage of businesses. That is somebody who has come out of the treadmill. That is a difficult operation phase, and who is looking at a which path should I take for you know, the trailblazer or the massive growth. So that is the stage where we are looking for continuous education. We are looking for continuous uh, uh, ideas and uh, various methodologies, brainstorming. So that's the uh, uh, location. So if you're already a peak performer or a trailblazer, maybe BGSM might not be the appropriate, uh, you know, sessions for you. And if you're just starting off, then of course we have an EMB, uh, Entrepreneur Mind Blueprint, which is a seven week uh, sessions like this, where we speak about absolute basics, basics about entrepreneurship. Okay. So this, how did it all start? We started almost five years back when a few friends of us, we got together, we started asking questions to each other. And that really um, set a foundation and helping us, you know, taking various decisions about business and helping us grow. So that's it. That's how it all started. And we have a portal called BA Community where uh, you can um, become a member there, and you can you can use the uh, forums that are there. There's a membership uh, you know side where you can search members. So we will make this active soon. It's already been created five years back, but it has been dormant for some time. So we'll make it active. We also have a tool called bgsm.resola.com where you can actually track your goals. So you can set goals and track it on a daily basis to see how is the movement happening. It's a very simple portal just to see how the uh, movement of uh, goal setting and all that is happening. So today we will be focusing on the growth foundation uh, part of the business. So we have focused on various other parts of business. You can see the different counts there. Those are basically the counts that we have done for each of those topics. Today we are focusing on a topic which we have not covered before, a uh, growth foundation topic. Uh, so let's get into it. So there's a WhatsApp group where you can also post uh, and ask for referrals. So if you're not part of that WhatsApp group, please let me know. Uh, I can send you the link. If you're in a uh, admin only posting kind of a group, there's another group where you can uh, promote your business. So please let me know about that. Okay, so today's topic is delegation roadmap to business success. So the format will be, I'll share for a few minutes and then we all will add to it and we'll also have some discussions on it. And then towards the end, we close the meeting. So that's how the format is. So what is delegation? Handing over tasks to team to free up one's time. Okay, I put it in a very, very simple English layman terms. I did not add any MBA jargon to this. So why delegation is important? Business owner or leader should dedicate their time focusing on following aspects of business. Strategy, growth and creativity. So that should be the aspect that a business owner should focus on. Business owners should avoid repetitive, non-creative tasks completely. And what all tasks can be delegated? Okay, according to me, if a task can be well documented, it should be de de dedicated. I mean, uh, delegated. Sorry, is that a wrong word? Delegated. That is, if you can well document anything that you are doing, like let's say you are doing it on a daily basis in your business, if you can document it, even a bullet point, you know, just write down, do this, do this, do this, do this. If you can well document it. And there is no newness to that or, a, you know, uh, something that happens different at each time and it's completely captured. Yeah, brother, Sajjan, absolutely standard operating procedure. If you can create a document like that, it should be delegated. Whatever it is, it has to be delegated. And what are the prerequisites for delegation? Training of team members. Many a times what happens is we uh, sometimes feel overburdened with our tasks. And we just want to get let go of it. And it doesn't work. It fails most of the time. So the best thing to do is first train the member. Uh, ensure that the member is dedicated, committed, consistent. Uh, you know, and, and the person is consistent. The person has been, uh, you know, um, uh, in, the, in the organization for some time. The person understands the responsibilities and all that. And please delegate only after that. And there is integrity of the team member. You know, the person is ha having high integrity. Of course, this is basic for any uh, team member in an organization, employee in an organization. But many a times we make a mistake and we give important tasks of the organization to a person who does not even have basic integrity in place. 
So, and proper monitoring mechanism. I would say the biggest uh, success factor for any delegation, for a delegation to become delegated activity to become successful is you have a proper monitoring mechanism. It could be a simple daily, uh, you know, Google Sheet update, or it could be a simple daily WhatsApp update, or it could be a full fledged, uh, you know, real time monitoring software that is intervened along with the process, the entire process. The process itself is software driven. Anything, whatever is the methodology that you're using, you must have a proper monitoring mechanism. Because sometimes the mistakes that we make is we think that, okay, I have delegated and it is done. Okay. And we don't even look at the other person, whether the person is doing it or not. There's no monitoring. We, we let it go for about a few weeks time. And then later on, we realize that 80% of the thing was not even done the way it was intended to be done. So monitoring mechanism is extremely important. So what is ultimate level of delegation? All activities done by others. Every single activity or work involved should be done by others. Critical decisions taken by the business owner, influential meetings to be attended by the uh, business owner because with, you know you cannot send your clone there. Okay, it's better to you yourself go to uh, influential critical meetings. Be generous and contribute to society. You know, get involved more and more in society related activities. Uh, you know, in in generating goodwill for the organization. Be the goodwill generator for the organization. Be a visionary for the organization. Okay, and all this takes time. Okay, it's not that this you can do it on the first day and then start doing all this. It takes time. It takes sometimes even decades to reach certain things that I mentioned here. So how is the ultimate level of delegation possible? Right people in the right seat. Without having the right people in the right seat, you'll not be able to delegate. Whatever you delegate, it will just come back to you after a few weeks because you will end up taking it back because it will not happen properly. Then personal secretary taking care of all operation and executional tasks. You know, we all know about this, that personal secretary can help beyond a particular level, you know, not initially, but once we are, uh, tasks become too difficult, we can always uh, delegate and it can be to such an extent that someone is helping you out with most of the tasks. Okay. Complete automation of mundane and repetitive tasks. This is also something that can be done. You, you can automate your entire regularly happening tasks completely by itself so that you need not even think about it and it just happens by itself and the automation need not be through a software it can even be as as uh, Sajin said you know it can also be through a standard operating procedure with a proper reporting that itself is sufficient and once you have that in place the whole thing just happens by itself and maybe once in a week you have a monitoring meeting or a stand-up call where you just, you know, go through a standard agenda of 15 minutes and you see everything is going normal and that's it. So 15 minutes, in so the first investment is a half an hour or a one hour SOP creation, then weekly 15 minutes investment sets your, uh, you know, delegation to happen automatically. So business owner must free his or her valuable time to ensure that their brain power is used only for new and challenging tasks. And hopefully these new and challenging tasks should again become an SOP and delegated. Okay. So that's how a business owner should keep looking at. So this ensures more growth for the organization. This is a gradual process. And uh, that is why it is a delegation roadmap and not a delegation methodology. It's not like you just follow something and you finish up delegation. It's like a roadmap. You, you, it takes time, sometimes even a decade or two for you to reach a you know, proper delegation and ensure that you're freeing up your time to keep growing your business. So that's the uh, sharing for today. Um, now it's time for each of you to contribute. So you please do mention your name, company, location, and the category, what business you are into, because this is also part of networking. And then you can contribute what you feel are, uh, you know, something that we all can do uh, to help us in delegating better. You can also ask questions. So uh, it's open to all of you. So please unmute and please ask, please contribute. anyone has any additional points to share about delegation even if you have questions you don't agree to something yeah good evening everyone good evening. this is Sajjan George from Learn Lifelong uh, located in Bangalore uh, my company is into training coaching mentoring and counseling uh, thank you brother Thomas for sharing very insightful uh, topic on delegation. And, uh, uh, one thing that comes to mind is about the Eisenhower matrix, uh, in which you know it, he talks about 
he divides the whole uh, you know work tasks and activities into urgent uh, not urgent important and not important right so he yeah. says that according to him whatever is urgent but not important needs to be delegated yeah. so it says like things that need to be done but don't require specific skills you know uh, yeah. so example says like you know uploading uh, blog posts scheduling sending replies to email you know yeah. uh, something like that uh, as you mentioned rightly that you know other than uh, strategic things you know that needs to be done uh, those are the things that can be delegated absolutely so to free up the time that can be used more effectively and efficiently those you know again it all depends on the level that we are and especially yeah. as business owners it is important that it is a fact it is, that we cannot do everything by our own so at some point we have to start delegating things and only oversee like you said once it is trained and given we just have to uh, oversee you know like uh, 15 minutes or half an hour a week probably and so on so yeah thank you once again for sharing those are very Absolutely. valuable inputs yeah thank you thank you very much thank you uh, i'm yeah. nagaraju yeah good evening yeah Right. Uh, my company name is Chidagni Group, uh, based out of Hyderabad. We work in the business interests of technology, uh, right? Uh, infrastructure. Um, so, specifically on the delegation aspect, what tools are we using to make the delegation happen? is a question probably that I have for the group. Okay. For us to ponder or for us to answer right now? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's a framework which uh, urgent, not important, and then so you delegate. So, those are the framework, right? Approaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, putting together a SOP, is something that can be given. Now, the, what I struggle is in the finance department um, and the team members are there. I don't want to delegate uh, generating an invoice or uh, collecting the payment mm -hmm. at the stage where uh, the company is right now, right? Uh, I want to keep the finance as a function close to my heart. But then uh, the, the backside is that uh, some of the repetitive tasks, I have to do it myself. Right. So that's where it's. So do you face that problem uh, that some of the business functions, do you keep them to you close to you? Right. And yeah. typically in an organization, uh, how many business processes, functions or the sub functions that you actually deal with? Was there any number to it? Uh, and uh, how many SOPs that we need to create? Because I did. Um, uh, looked at this particular aspect and I got about 300 plus uh, business sub functions just wow. in every department. I worked on that. Probably mm -hmm. maybe I can share that in any upcoming events or things please like do, that. Please do. But, okay, so the, Monday, uh, the coming so... Wednesday you are doing it. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is you have to put it in 10 minutes. You said 300 and also, but uh, maybe you can summarize it and probably group it to, into 10 minutes sharing. All right. Sure. So uh, this SOP is is a wonderful uh, area. The, the thing is, uh, on the finance, I wanted to ask as a business owners, do you really delegate, right? Uh, some yeah. fun some uh, business functions are ripe to be delegated without any problem, trust, etc. Some are very close. So, yeah. yeah I, I think, uh, Mr. Dinesh, you want to answer, please, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is my thought uh, on delegation and and. And I second to Nagaraju sir here that a delegate comes with a certain level of authority, right? Mm -hmm. You think that the next person is authoritative to take that task. Yes, then you can delegate. But if you think you cannot give that authority to next person, then you should not be delegating that in terms of uh, how you mentioned about finance, right? 
you want to be the authority person to handle the finance so you it's it's obvious that you will not delegate to that person but for example let's say we have got a business development manager who go door to door and do some sales for us right and now he is the person with authority uh, having and showing what our company does what the profile is all about so we are actually giving the authority to that person to talk about our company in 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 some meetings and in some exhibitions that he is he or she is visiting right so mm-hmm. it's like uh, delegating not just task but also thinking of that person is really authoritative to take it or not you based on that you decide whether to delegate or not right and to and to second point uh, and that is again my thought here uh, automation helps a lot to delegate right sometimes we know that uh, something needs to be done by an assistant right rather giving it to an assistant let's buy a subscription let's automate that workflow in that and it it will generate its reports or any commands or any responses that we need to have regular regularly it can be done in that way so there's always a high cost delegation and low cost delegation is also i feel like as business owners we sometimes have to take that decision whether we have to really have a person doing it uh, whether whom we can trust and believe or we can have a tool to whom we can just certainly uh, customize it and use it Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, uh, Dinesh. Uh, Jawahar, sir, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, see, before uh, delegation, which is D, there is something okay, called C, request, which is competence. One request. Uh, Mr. Dinesh has not told your name, company, location, so maybe you can just briefly say. And Jawahar, sir, also before starting, after Dinesh says, you also please introduce because uh, yeah. you know, people should know who you are. So just yeah. one second. Dinesh, first you, please introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Sorry, yeah. I forgot about that. So I'm Dinesh. I'm a co-founder of Lead Up Management Training Institute based out of Hyderabad. Uh, we have recently started this function and we do uh, trainings on project risk and change management predominantly. Thank you. Excellent. In fact, Nagraj and uh, Dinesh, you both should meet up in Hyderabad. Yeah, Jawahar, sir, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, my name is Jawahar Michael. Uh, I'm a director HR are in uh, Expo HR Private Limited, which is uh, a consulting firm, HR consulting firm. We also have a small software company called Talents Tech. Um, so we do training, uh, HR related training, leadership, uh, team building training. See, I would say a couple of things. So before delegating, we need to delegate tasks which have people have the competence to do. So we need to assess whether what we are delegating, pe- the person whom we are delegating has the competence and the skill to do, then only we need to delegate. Uh, See, then I also quickly respond to, we need to delegate if the organization has to grow. So we need to clearly make uh, what we call, see most of the companies will have something called delegation of authority matrix. So lots of multinational companies, large companies follow that. They will say this decisions up to this amount, uh, you can make decisions. So there is a clear uh, guideline up to what financial implication you can make a decision. So even financial uh, things can be delegated. So otherwise there is no authority. So the authority has to be delegated with of course, of course the limits. And uh, that's very important. And um, see, there is also something called a model called uh, RACI. I think uh, most of the uh, professionals would have heard it. So when we delegate, we should also say who is responsible for it, uh, who is accountable for it. See, when responsible is, who is immediately responsible for doing it. Accountable is a manager above him who is who will be held accountable. He needs to monitor. Delegation doesn't mean abdicating things. Uh, so somebody has to be accountable, need to be monitored, right? So that person is accountable. Then some people have to be consulted. Some people have to be informed. I think we need to have these also in place before we delegate. Uh, this is what I want to share. Thank you. Thank you very much sir, for sharing. So Nagraj, I have got one input on uh, this. Okay. So this is one of my recommended books, Dave Ramsey's Entree Leadership. Okay. So this guy, he started his business, I think um, close to 25, 30 years now. And he grew his company from a very small. Now he's crossed a thousand people in the US and he um, uh, goes on a podcast literally every single day. Um, 
So he wrote this book and uh, I follow him a lot and, I, and I've, I've heard this audio book multiple times and he answers your specific question. Okay. About can I delegate finance? Can I delegate accounts? Okay. In fact, he says, because uh, he has probably gone through the exact phase that where you are in, he says, initially do not delegate finance and accounts. Initially. Okay. Keep it to yourself. Uh, uh, and as all the others mentioned it, after you have proper systems controls, uh, like limits and all as the server saying, you know, all that, only then once you have complete foolproof in, you know, system in place, then you delegate. And that's, that's what this guy says. Okay. He's done business for 30 years now, thousand, thousand plus team members. So your question is actually being answered in that book. I would strongly recommend this book for you. Uh, I think it will really help uh, to set a foundation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else has any questions or any other topic you would like to discuss? Thank you. So I think we'll now come towards the end. So please do invite your friends for these uh, meetings. And if you are interested to share something inspiring to all of us, which can help us, please do let me know. So like coming week, uh, Mr. Nagraj, you would be doing it. I'll coordinate with you on creating the poster and all that. So I'll be in touch with you on that, on the topic and everything. Uh, Mr. Samunarana, you want to say something? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm not in possible to come in a video. Sorry for that. A great opportunity to connect with all the fellow people here. But thanks so much for this uh, connecting again with people. So networking is always wonderful. So the thing is like, uh, the, what you have got, you your guys name, are talking Your something. company name, location and category first, please. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, yes. Yeah. My name is Samya Narayan here. I represent a brand called Describe Consulting Services. We are under the content writing, copywriting. That's the, one of the main priorities we work with. But we are a complete digital solution provider. So you name it, we have it. So we, uh, we transform... Uh, the idea is to transform all the SMEs into big SMEs. That's the idea. Small to big, that's what we do. We specialize in what is called the thought leadership using the power of LinkedIn. That's what we do. And I, I'm a very big networker. So and Thomas knows about it. So I yeah. don't want to talk much about it on that. So sorry. Not we'll, we'll give, I'll give you a video. session, uh, Mr. Sabinar, and in future where I really want you to speak on how you network. Because the way Mr. Sabinar and networks is at an entirely different level. So he's introduced me to a few of them. So I'll, I will ask him to do that in the upcoming one of the sessions. I'll ask him to do that. Yeah, please go ahead. Anytime, any, anytime for you. Yeah. Uh, see, what you, what you guys are talking is something uh, very, very sensitive. At the time, it's it's an authority level, actually. So we the, 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 the meaning, the delegation is all about ownership, I would say, because uh, the more important is... Uh, uh, I always feel that uh, I uh, I can like, give you a classic example. Like uh, we, as a founder of a company, you always have a vision. Like uh, I want to be like this. I want my company to grow like this. But unless you have somebody who's next to you who has the same vision, your company cannot grow. Uh, a very classic example is I was part of the ITC Infotech quite a few years back, a, a decade back, where I could see the owner... Uh, had there is one I'm sorry completely forgot about the name of the person who actually ra was running the ITC InfoTech. He had a fantastic growth. Where around uh, ninety eight, uh, I would say two thousand four or five, he had a vision about the mobile apps and mobile things and all. But unfortunately, there was no people who next to him had the same vision to grow. Uh, the more important is when you are going to have a when you have the vision of a person that has to be transmitted to the next level of people. So when the when that when, when that transmits automatically the delegation also happens. So the vision is very important. The more important that it has to transmit. When it's getting transmitted, you should understand who is right for the right job. A very classic successful job is Sun TV. Everybody knows how famous it is. Sun TV is a very classic example of the uh, Maran has uh, put the right people at the right place, and more important, he took care of them very well. It's not about you delegating people and getting a job. You should be in a position to understand the people who are putting it, what is the need for them, and you take care of them before they ask anything so that they focus only on the work. If you if you keep delegating work and you're not going to take care of it, you are not going to get the goals out of it. So it's very important to delegate the right people and ensuring that you take care of the people in the right format 
And after taking care of it, you should, as uh, Mr. Jawahar put it very beautifully, accountability is very, very important. So everybody has to be measured. Mem numbers don't lie. So you should be in a position to understand who, who is expected to do what. And if there is a problem, you are not supposed to scold or fight with them. You are supposed to guide them in the right way. This is what it is. This is what this is. This is what I'm expecting from you. Even a very simple example. Even you, you take your own yeah, kids. Uh, Mrs. To go and we'll, have to, we'll have to cut it short because we need to close uh, just it a second. In the next just minutes. a few minutes. Just a minute. Uh, even if you, if you take your own kids, if you go to shout at them or what they do, they will not be in a position to. Other than you to, told them, this is what I'm expected out of it. You can see a lot of change. That's it. So. Delegations with authority, with the right people. Thank you. Thank you. Now you all know that he is a good content writer. He can create content at the fly. You know, that, that's, the, that's the way he is. So thank you very much for sharing. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's come to a close now. So these are books that I recommend if you are looking at scaling up your business, you're starting and you'd like to scale up from a small size to a big size. And these are books, of course, very popular books. Probably you all are already aware of these three books, but strongly I would recommend these three books if you would like to peek into how extremely large organizations which have been there for more than a century, how they operate and how did they uh, become such a large and uh, legacy creating organizations. And so please share your questions in the group. We'll plan a session for that uh, upcoming session. So we already have two people booked for the upcoming session. So Mr. Nagaraju will be doing the coming week and Mr. Saminarayanan will be doing the week after that on master networking or you know superpower networking. Maybe that will be the topic. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. Um, have a Good night and a great week ahead. Wish you all the uh, success in the business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Thomas. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank